Psalm 105 reminds us, sing to him, sing praise to him, tell of his wonderful acts. To cover the time while I'm off on my vacation, we'll be offering this, this period of, of reflections on some of the hymns of our faith that have been recorded before I've left. The hope is that, that, in, that, we'll, find, feel, that we'll receive some inspiration not only from from the music, but also from the stories of faith that, that surround several of the people who, who were involved in creating some of these hymns we've come to know over the years. Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing has been with us since 1758. Robert Robinson had, well, he hadn't had the best of beginnings. His father died while he was young and his mother unable to control him. She sent him off to London to, to learn a skill of barbering. Instead, he, he learned the skill of drinking and, and gang life on the streets, finding the, the rough lifestyle more to his taste. When he was 17 and, and well plied with liquor, he and his buddies had, had ventured off to see a fortune teller and laughed as she tried to tell them their future. Whether something to, disturbed him from what she said, or, or whether he was hoping to poke some more fun at, at a different sort of, well, sort of speaker, Robert persuaded his friends to attend an evangelistic meeting that was being held by George Whitfield later that evening. Well, apparently something clicked while he was there because, well, Robert would soon find himself as a preacher, commencing his ministry at a Methodist chapel in Norfolk, England. During this, this first spike of devotion, he would pen that famous hymn that, that we'll be singing later, Come Thou Fount. Now I call this his, his first spike of devotion because it seems that, that Robinson was indeed prone to wander. Over time, he became an increasingly unhappy and unstable. His former convictions and training became, well, became of very little importance to him. Faith eventually felt like a charade, not, not worth even trying to keep up. One day, Robert found himself as, as a passenger on a, on a stagecoach with a young woman who was passing the times by, by singing hymns during the long and, well, rather dull journey. At this point, Robert had little to do with the Christian church. Of course, by, by chance or by act of the Spirit, what do you suppose one of the hymns that this young lady sang while they were on their long ride? That's right. Come thou fount of every blessing. Tune my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing. Call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me some melodious sonnet sung by flaming tongues above. Praise the mountain fixed upon it. Mount of thy redeeming love. O oh, to grace how great of how great a debtor, daily I am constrained to be. Let thy goodness, like a fetter, bind my wandering heart to thee. Prone to wander, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. Here's my heart, Lord, take and seal it. Seal it for thy courts above. As she finished singing, the, the young woman asked Robert what he thought about that particular song. His, his startling reply was, Madam, I am the unhappy man who wrote that hymn many years ago. And I would give a thousand worlds if I had, if I had them. If, if I could feel now as I felt then. The woman's reported as responding, From that fountain, there is still mercy that flows. Prone to wander and leave the God he loved. Robert had the rare experience of well, finding his own music was what convicted him to, to return his heart to his God once more, as it was being sung by another. Yes, while wandering from the fold of God, Jesus sought him while a stranger and brought him home. Robertson, he would have several more years of productive ministry after, well, after that encounter prior to his eventual death in 1790. Luke reminds us in his gospel. Jesus told them this parable. Suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one of them. 
Does he leave the 99 in the open country? Doesn't he leave the 99 in the open country and go after the lost sheep until he finds it? And when he finds it, he is joyful and puts it on his shoulders and goes home. Then he calls his friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me. I have found my lost sheep. I tell you, in the same way, there will be much more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who do not need to. I've heard it said that leaving 99 to look for only one, that it only makes sense if you happen to be that one lost sheep. We give thanks for God gracious enough to look for us, strange enough to sometimes find us, well, to find us by using our own words to call us back. Let us pray once more. Lord, we are a people prone to wander. Some of us wander, wander as far from your presence as, as we're able to get. Some of us have wandered but never quite got out of the sight of your sanctuary. But all of us are prone at some point to become a lost sheep. All of us rely on your help to, to find us and bring us back home. So tune our hearts to sing your praise. May that nurse mercy that never ceases, may it find us today. May it indeed cause us to break into some melodious sonnet sung by flaming tongues above. Lord, may the story of Robert Roberts, may the hymn that he wrote, may it still inspire us all these many years later. We ask it through Christ who calls to us even now, wherever we may be in our wanderings or where our love may be found. Amen. And shall we join together in singing this wondrous song of praise, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. Let thy goodness, 
Oh, 